All right, everybody, welcome back to Uniform Circular Motion. Today we are going to be talking about tangential velocity. And you can kind of see that with these sparks coming out right here, these tangential velocity with tangential velocity. Okay, so anyway, this is a cool video that you could see um, from a movie. Uh, let's see if you're correct or not, if you can do that. All right, so tangent velocity notes. Uh, you know, so form circular motion is the motion of an object with constant speed, not constant velocity. The reason the velocity is not constant is because the direction is always changing. Okay, so even though it's moving with the constant speed, since its direction is changing, the velocity is not constant. And kind of, this is a spoiler, but since the velocity is not constant, it is accelerating. But we'll talk more about that later. Okay, so tangential velocity speed formula. So we know speed is equal to distance over time. However, when something is moving in a circular pattern, it's gonna be the circumference divided by the period. So the distance is uh, the circular distance with its circumference, two pi r, and how long it takes to go or all the around that circle is the period, okay? So this is the formula that we get. The velocity tangential is equal to two pi r divided by the period. And then you can manipulate it in these ways as you see over here. Okay, moving on. Okay, so an electric rod has three light bulbs which are depicted in blue. The rods, maybe I'm gonna use a different color since that's blue. I'll use this green. Okay, the rod spins with a uniform circular motion. Light bulb A is the closest light bulb from the center of the rotation. Light bulb B is the furthest away and, that, and at the edge of the rod. Uh, which light bulb takes longer to go all the way around? Okay, so this is going to go in a circle like this. Which one is going to take longer to go all the way around? Take your time, pause it if you want to, but I'm going to play the answer. So we should know they both take the same amount of time. So this is a rod. So since it's connected to each other, uh, they're going to be moving at the same kind of angular motion as each other. So they're going to take the same amount of time to go all the way around. Okay, moving on. A uh, similar kind of question. An electric rod has three light bulbs, which are depicted in blue. The uh, rod spins with a uniform circular motion. Light bulb A is the light bulb closest from the center of rotation. Light bulb B is the furthest away and at the edge of the rod. Which light bulb travels faster, light bulb A or light bulb B? Um, and you might be thinking, okay, so last time, they both take the same amount of time to go all the way around, so that means they must be traveling the same speed. But that is not correct. It is actually light bulb B that's going to be traveling faster. And why is that? Well, B is much further from the center of the rod than A. A is only a short distance from the center rod. And if you could think of this as a track, if this was a person here and this was a person here, and they both went around this track, and it took them uh, the same amount of time, what we would notice is person B would have traveled a lot further distance, but have traveled in the same amount of time as A. So this shows that since B is traveling more distance, but the same amount of time, that means it is going faster. And similar with the velocity tangential formula, two pi r divided by the period. Period is the same, but the radius is a lot bigger so that means the velocity is also bigger, if that makes sense. Okay, moving on. First, a mathematical example here. If a 10 meter rod is swung in a circle, the rod has three lights depicted in blue. Light bulb A is placed five meters from the bottom of the rod and light bulb B is 10 meters from the bottom of the rod. So this is five meters and this is 10 meters. What is the speed of light bulb A? What is the speed of light bulb B? Okay. So remember velocity tangent is equal to two pi r divided by period. So let's kind of calculate this. Two pi, and then we're gonna do this for a first. So two pi r for a is gonna be five meters. And the period is, what does it say? Oh, 0 0.8 seconds for the to go all the way around. So let's find out what that is. Oops. Two pi times five divided by 0.8, and we should get 39.27 meters per second. 
but B, and we talked about this last time, B should be faster than A. So let's try that out. So the velocity tangent is going to be equal, I'll say velocity B is going to be equal to 2 pi, but R this time is going to be 10. But the period is the same, takes the same amount of time for it to go all the way around. So let's calculate what that is, 2 pi times 10 divided by 0.8. So we get 78.54 meters per second. And something you can also tell is that this is double this one, okay? And the, the re reason for that is it's double the radius. All right, moving on. Uh, a race car goes around a circular track. The track has a radius of 120 meters. If the race car uh, goes around the track with a speed of 52 meters per second, how long does it uh, car take to make one lap? Okay, so this is the radius. 120 meters. Um, okay, so we know that velocity tangent is equal to 2 pi r divided by t. But now we want to know how long it takes to make one lap. What that means is we're looking for the period here. So we know the formula for the period. You can memorize it or copy it down or just use algebraic manipulation. This is going to be this. So let's do this period is equal to 2 pi r, r being 120, uh, divided by the velocity, uh, which is going to be 52. So it's going to be 52 meters per second over the track. So let's put this into our calculator, 2 pi, oops, 2 pi 120, divided by 52. And that's equal to 14.5 seconds. Okay. So part B, how long would it take the car to make five laps? So we should know um, the number of laps or number of cycles is equal to the period, oops, sorry, sorry. The time is equal to the period times the number of light laps or the number of cycles, okay? So that was from when we learned about period before. So if the period is 14.5 and number of cycles is five, Let's figure out what that is. That's going to be 72.5 laps. Oh, no, not laps. How long would it take? Seconds. Okay, so I hope that helps. Moving on. A horse runs around a circular track with a speed of 10 meters per second. If it takes the horse 55 seconds to go all the way around, what is the radius of the track? Okay, so again, you might have memorized the formula, but I'm just going to do al algebraic manipulation. We should know that velocity tangential times the period divided by 2 pi is going to be equal to the radius. Okay, so let's figure this out. Velocity tangential, it's going uh, 10 meters per second. Let me just do that. Okay times the period, it takes 55 seconds to go all the way around, divided by 2 pi, and make sure to put this in parentheses, especially if you put it into the calculator, or else it's going to think that the pi is multiplying. Okay, so 10 times 55, divided by parentheses 2 pi, and we should get 87.53 meters. Uh, five, three, five, four. Yeah, maybe five, four. Okay. Moving on. Okay. So a little video. Um, if you can look at it, check it out. And, uh, so that's it for today. Tomorrow or next time, we're going to be talking about centripetal acceleration and centripetal force. So I hope to see you with that. Thanks for watching. Bye.